Listen, God cannot force you, but he can teach you. He cannot force you, but he can teach you. And God has given me these words to come and teach you. And I come with humility. I'm so humbled. I may look a little boy to you or a small boy to you. But the Lord has given me these words. These words the Lord has given me to speak to you. For you to live the ways of those ways of life. For you to be redeemed. It's not too late. Before you perish into that sin of falsehood, false teachings, false prophecies, you know what you're doing. You know exactly what you're doing. The redemption power, this saving power of redemption is available for you. Man of God, this saving power of redemption is available. Let it not be said that it's too late. Never say it's too late. I'm here to make money. I'll make money. Um, I'll, I'll case with God later. There's nothing like that. You will perish in that sin of falsehood. It's a sin. And it pains God when he sees his children, his servants, his men and women that he has called with his holy calling and divine calling being ensnared by sin of falsehood, false prophecies. Mm. Only those who are willing only those who are willing will receive it, this redemption. Only those who are willing will be redeemed. Only those who are willing will know that this truth, only those who are willing, let this message be an eye-opener to you. Only those who are willing will receive this truth and it's only the truth that you have that sets you free. It's only in truth that you can be set free. Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Free from this bondage of falsehood. The falsehood that you are in, it's a captivity. Let it be broken. Break out from that captivity of falsehood. Man of God. Woman of God. Break forth out of it. God doesn't want his children to perish in that captivity. God doesn't want you to perish in that captivity. No. No. That's what the desire of the Father. This word came for somebody to be saved. And if you hear this word, do not harden your heart. Jesus came for you to be saved. That is why. That is why even Simon the sorcerer believed when Philip preached and did the wonders of God. That he was saved, he was baptized. And he was redeemed from falsehood. Be delivered from this falsehood. Be delivered from this falsehood. It's time for your salvation. It's time for you to be redeemed. You know very well what you've been doing. But let it not be said that God did not remind you. This is just but a reminder of what you know. It's just a reminder of what you know, so that you will not perish in your sin, in your falsehood. This is God's word to you. And it's time for you to come out of that pit of falsehood. It is time. This falsehood, these false teachings, these false prophecies that you give, they will not do you good. This path will not do you good. This path will destroy you. And before destruction, receive redemption. Before destruction, receive redemption. The saving power of redemption is available for you. Redemption is available to you to prevent destruction, to prevent you from perishing. In the book of First Peter, let me read First Peter. Quickly, First Peter. No, it's Second Peter. Sorry, Second Peter, chapter five. Second Peter, sorry, chapter two, verse fifteen to seventeen, which are forsaken the right way, 
which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. Have you forsaken the right way of ministry? And have you gone astray following the way of Balaam? There's something called the way of Balaam. What is the way of Balaam? The son of Bosso who loved the wages of unrighteousness. You remember in Numbers 22 down to 24, those chapters, you'll find this prophet called Balaam. When Balak, the king, sends elders, in their hands they are carrying the diviner's fee. The diviner's fee. Meaning he was a, also a diviner. How does the Bible know you? A diviner or a true prophet? When I say a true prophet, when I say a prophet, I mean every category, whether bishop, apostle, whatever, you're a prophet. Whether a pastor, a teacher, you're a prophet of God. How does the Bible know you? If people have to pay to see you, are you not a diviner? That is the way of Balaam. It's falsehood. And you know it. And you never began with it. That's not how you were when you began ministry. When God called you, you could not dare do that. But now, they have to pay to see you. There is a fee. You don't pray for people free. No, 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 no. And some say it, um, you know, openly. I will not pray for you for free. This ministry is not free. This anointing, I have suffered for it. Mm, really? Really? You received freely. You are commanded to give it freely. Why are you selling it? You never began with selling handkerchiefs, oil or water, anointed water or nails, whatever it is that you're selling. You know you are in the pit of falsehood. It's time to make a U-turn and run to Jesus. The way of Balaam who loved the wages of unrighteousness. In ministry there are wages called the wages of unrighteousness. When you swindle people in the name of Jesus, you get wages of unrighteousness. Verse 16, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumb ass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. God has, to, has come to stop the madness of the prophet. It's called the madness of the prophet. Selling things. Merchandise. Categorizing the children of God. If you are $1,000 stand here, I will anoint you with horn, horn, horn. Mm. $100 stand here. I will wash your feet. Mm. With ten dollars, you pass here, pass here, pass here quickly, quickly. You are touched quickly, quickly, quickly. Mm. The way of Balaam, Jude says it very well. Jude, brother Jude, Jude chapter one, as only one chapter. Jude one verse eleven. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after. It's, is it not greedy? Ran greedily after the era of Balaam. It's an era. What you are in right now is an era. The era of Balaam for reward and perished in the gainsaying of call. Era of Balaam. The way of Balaam. The doctrine of Balaam is the doctrine of selling and buying in the church. Falsehood, false prophecies. Going for powers. To do ministry, like Simon in Acts chapter 8, the sorcerer, he had bewitched the people. Listen, if you know that has been your path and you're willing to change, to turn to Jesus, it's time to surrender to him. Say, Jesus, redeem my soul, redeem my life from this pit of falsehood. Help me do the right ministry. Write my name in the book of life. Come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you made that prayer, it's not too late. You are redeemed. The redemption power of God is.